Hello YouTube, my name is Trey, welcome to Welcome to Change. Today we're going to talk about the phenomenon of the adult babies. So, the adult baby lifestyle has recently taken off in the LGBTQ, decades after the first public ev uh, event dedicated to adults who identify and live as babies occurred in the 1990s. A group of adult baby uh, diaper lovers, which is known as ADB, ABDL, called the Diaper Pale Friends, reached almost 3,000 members by 1995. According to the parent-giving psychologist, raised the idea of adults enjoying wearing baby diapers beginning in the 1980s, the outlet reported. So, uh, obviously, I've read into this. Uh, I know about the ADB, uh, the ABDL, and I got to say this about this. Um, I don't know why it's being contributed to the LGBT. I just think like anything that's weird and off, people want to... Oh, daily, come on, come on, don't, don't do that right in the middle of my video. <laughs> you know what I'm talking People who want to be part of this adult uh, b adult baby and all this kind of stuff, they always contributed to the LGBT, even though the LGB was originally supposed to be about sexuality, not every kink and fetish you have in this world. Once again, I believe that group, I'll say it again, I believe that there's kind of a group of validation. Whatever weird thing you have going on, it has to be accepted it's cause they're because it's part of the LGBTQ. Let's throw up a flag. Let's put us all in there, right? Anyway. So as far as these uh, little babies and these adults wearing <laughs> diapers and doing this kind of stuff, I'm going to actually show you a video just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a, uh, uh, just so you kind of see what it's really about. Now, there is such a thing, and this really does happen in reality, called regression, right? When somebody goes through something really traumatic, they will go through regression and they will end up going younger than they are. But the way that these people use being an adult baby is not it is not the way that people would go through regression and i hate that people even bring that up because hold on let me get this pulled up for you guys because the problem is with all this stuff is that people use an excuse to get around children let's let's not be fooled let's not even think for one second that we got to be fooled about this okay so here's the video um here it is this is probably the most, one of the more uh, known uh, videos that people know. All right, let me get it for you guys. It's this is actually the girl that we saw in the uh, post. This is actually her. Hi, hi, every baby. I am Paigey. I'm 25 years old, and I'm an adult baby girl. I live this lifestyle 24-7. So normally, whenever I wake up, I get out of my crib, I crawl over, I get dressed for the day. I want to say this, first of all, uh, being an adult baby, I don't know how you can live your whole life like this 24-7. I don't know any, when I think baby, I think infants really about one to two, not even necessarily a toddler. I don't see them dressing themselves like this. That's how you know that this is not a normal thing, right? People want to make this normal. Like, everybody should just live their life how you do it. But how do you live your life as an adult when it comes to relationships? Like, you're going to, this is what always ends up happening, guys. You're going to get grown men who pretend to be little girls who do stuff with little girls. <laughs> that is exactly where it's coming to head. And everybody wants us to be sympathetic and empathetic towards these people and be like, well, you know, you got to be, you know, uh, there's not all of them do that. I know that not all of them do that, but it only takes a few in this case, right? We we can't always tell the difference. So if we allow it to be normal for one, we have to make it be a normal for all. What we need to do is be like, if you want to live your life like this, this has to stay in home. And you can still, in fact, if I met people like this, I would keep these people away from kids. I don't care if you like to be an adult baby or not. You are a person that can not be around kids just to make sure that this kind of stuff doesn't happen. If I see you crawling around the playground in diapers, you're gone, Okay. I say, let's just do that. If we want to keep every kid safe, just keep these people away from kids, period. And they can live their life in their fantasy at home. And then I play with my toys. 
There we go. Rah! <laughs> yeah. He even got a bear on you. I'm sorry, guys. What's, what keeps making me make the faces, I just find it disgusting watching an adult woman. Not necessarily the baby thing, but keep spreading her legs and opening them up with the diaper. It just make it just grosses me out. It's just, it's just, it's just. If you know, you know. <laughs> because she's acting like a baby, but she's an adult woman, so she's gonna do things that. I, you, you got it. Sweet happy baby. I try and make sure that I always play really nice, but sometimes. You can't really help it. Like, when an airplane crashes, I can't help a natural- Oh my gosh. Hold on. What is... Hmm. You can't really help it. I'm wondering like, what those welts are Like, when an airplane crashes, arm. I can't help a natural disaster. Oh, are those welts or was that the camera? No, that's her arm. Is that from Whippets? Ow, you lost the that, wind. That I didn't We're look into, guys. Down. Are they gonna get to do some commentary or this just the video? Got the do maintenance. <laughs> the dinosaur's gotta come and fix it. Okay. Gotta get the dino, because the dino fixes all the toys, because he has the tools. Sometimes I build a whole world out of blocks. But then the ponies come and just knock it all down. Are, are you gonna go into something? So, I don't really. They come and lock over my up here. I need to hear have an actual conversation about how this all started. Like your own caregiver. I live on my own and okay, I think it's not sexual. I just really enjoy There we go. It's just because they make me feel really safe and secure and little. Um, they're really comfortable and I like whenever they get warm, wet and squishy. It's not sexual for me. Why do I make these videos? I, I don't understand. At some point, I've got to... It can be sexual for a lot of people, but for me personally, being my lifestyle 24-7, it's not sexual. I just really enjoy it. I like to fluff my diapers up before I wear them to make them extra fluffy. So they're really, really soft. I am primarily my own caregiver. I live on my own and I take care of myself. I do work and make a living. I support myself in my own life. I make an active decision as a coherent adult to live as a baby because I have created that ability in my life to be able to sustain that in a healthy way. Let's go to the mall. I don't understand the welts on her arms. It's bothering me. It looks like belts. Because like I wear diapers, belts. I do have to change them. I have to change probably three or four times a day. And I do change them myself. <laughs> um, I don't ask anybody else to change my diapers. The way I think about it is that people go to the bathroom a lot more than three or four times a day. So I'm saving time. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not saving time if you're having to change diaper because if you went to the bathroom three or four times a day at the toilet, you don't have to change the diaper. So obviously you would be you're actually wasting more time. It doesn't take much to go to the bathroom, do a quick, you know, and then you're done. But you having to use the bathroom on yourself. It, she says she goes, she changes the bath her diaper three to four times a day. That takes a lot of work. Ever. I have all of the best bath toys. It's lots of fun. I can play like I'm in the sea and go on adventures because I have a mermaid Barbie. <laughs> you move. <laughs> uh, right, we're, we're gonna get past that. Like squeaky, I make some chocolate milk. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> So I go ahead and pre-make my chocolate milk in a bottle so that it's ready. Because mm. mm. I drink more than one cup of chocolate milk a day. So whenever I finish drinking my first cup, I just refill the chocolate milk and I put it back in the fridge. And then at the end of the day, I wash the cup. And then I'll go and I'll turn on my favorite show, Clifford the Big Red Dog, and I'll eat some of my toddler food out of my pouches, and I'll drink my chocolate milk, and just that show be a happy canceled. baby. I, saw, I, I thought they did a weird episode about something weird, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I love Clifford the Big Red Dog. See, even got the blankie showing all the fun things that he does with all his friends, just like on the show. <laughs> Mm. 
My playroom is full of things that I have been collecting my have a camera in there? Well, entire it. life. And honestly, it's kind of the pride and joy of my life. Nothing makes me happier than just being in my playroom. Um... Okay, we done it. Okay, we saw the life. We looked into it, okay, we saw the life. Once again, guys, this is people, people who live this life, and she says it's not sexual. They all say that same thing. I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure about the wealth. If you guys know something about that, please let me know. I didn't look into that because I didn't see it until now. Um, so I don't know if that's from her, you know, getting like whippings from somebody who comes in the house and pretends she's a baby. I don't know. I don't know. Or if that's just a skin. I've never seen any skin uh, irritations like that. I've seen, you know, people who have skin issues. I've never seen them like that. Those look specific, specifically like belt welts, right? Or somebody is hitting her with uh, something. Something small that's hitting her arm and causing it to, you know, the blood vessels, the blood vessels. The... Anyway, <clears throat> people who live this life with an adult baby and ha love these diapers, they want to tell you that this is just a normal everyday thing and they want to live in this regression state. Um, we can't normalize this, though, um, because the real reason that anybody would normally go into regression like that is because of traumatic events. And she may actually have that based off her what we saw her on the skin. She definitely may be going through some things. I have no idea. But we can't start saying that mental illness is something that we need to normalize. No, this is something we need to help. If somebody for some reason feels like they need to act like a baby every day, we don't need to say, oh, that's just a freaky kink. No, we need to be like, well, what's going on? What makes you want to act that way? Why do you feel like you need to be a baby or act like a baby and um, do things and talk and baby talk? Because, you know, like I said, I've worked with kids and we, t we learn that, you know, when a kid starts talking and baby talk and starts regressing like that, there's normally something going on in the household. Right. And we should do the same thing with adults. I don't wish that we didn't turn everything into a kink and then throw it right into the LGB and just say oh, LGBTQ. Uh, somebody likes to wear dog outfits and get kicked in the nuts. LGBTQ. Oh, somebody likes to go outside, rock, walk naked around kids. LGBTQ. Oh, somebody who like who likes to uh, be whipped and spanked until they're until they're physically in pain, can't walk. LGBTQ. It's like. Why don't we ever ask people why this? Why do you want to be why do you want to be hit to the point of pain that is irresistible to where you're getting welts? Why would you want to act like a baby to where you're pooping and peeing in your own diaper? It's, that's just weird to even say. But why would you think that's normal? Why is that just immediately LGBTQ? That's what I don't understand. This stuff isn't normal. This stuff is what adults should be getting past. We saw this in normal life. We wouldn't be thinking, oh, LGBTQ. And I think that's what they want us to get to. They want us to normalize every single thing that goes on until y'all know the magic one that they want to be put into the LGB. Okay. They want to put kids in there. Don't, don't get fooled. We saw the new acronym, which includes kids. No, 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 no. And so now I'm inclined, the more that it's the reason that it's because these kids started getting put in here is the reason I started now coming out and saying stuff. But I want to say this. I've always thought the same way I thought about the LGBT and everything, every kink that they talked about. I've said this many a times, but I'll keep saying it. I believe that people join the LGBT with whatever weird uh, a fetish and kink they have. They join this group that is no longer really a group anymore because you can see them imploding. But they join this just for pure validation. No matter what their mental illness is, no matter what they're going through, if they can just throw that umbrella, LGBT, you can't even talk to them, can't speak to them, can't call them mental illness. You just got to be, oh, well, I guess it's just part of the flag movement. No, because once again, that is not true care. I know it's difficult to keep trying to help everybody who has a mental illness that struggles with the ba that struggles with the king, BDSM, sadist, uh, what is it, sadist? being a sadist, people who like pain, people who like to cause pain. I know it's difficult for us to go after every little thing instead of just calling it a sex kink and moving on with our lives. But I think we need to keep making that sacrifice and asking these people, why do you like to hurt people? Like, why did they give you power? Instead of saying, well, it's just a freedom thing. It feels, no, no. There's, the re there's something wrong if you like people to hurt you, literally, physically slap you in the face, spit in your face, hurt you, cause you actual pain with, paddles and whips we need to go through that and if you like to do that to people we need to have a conversation because we start to have this conversation and we talked about i watched a whole man guys i watch so much stuff now um but i watched a whole documentary on people who would do the most awful the most awful things i've ever heard of to pets right they would do this stuff to these animals and it is grotesque 
but there's a whole community for it. A whole community for abusing animals that's alive and well today, right? And people just say, oh, it's just a kink. What? I mean, the stuff that they were doing to these animals and some of them, and I'm just going to give you just one example just to show you how bad it was. There was one form that talked about taking an, an object and doing something to an animal so much that the animal split, split in half and died. And then they used the blood and put it on their body. And you would think that'd be something uh, mentally ill with that person. And that's crazy. But you know what? There's a whole group for it. And they were like, oh, that's awesome. Some people were talking about boiling their hands, hamsters alive. They took their hamsters and boiled them alive. And it was a whole group dedicated to it. Are we supposed to normalize that, guys? Because every little thing that we normalize, it gets worse. It gets worse. There's a community for every single thing out there. I'm sure y'all know about it. Well, I hope you don't know about it, but there's a whole group for every single sexual deviancy. And there's a whole community for abuse. There's a whole community for animal abuse, human abuse, kid abuse, child abuse, toddler abuse. abuse. It was, so I cannot sit back and just say, let's accept every little thing, even if it's just adults in diapers. No. We need to have a conversation. We need to start doing more talking. Okay. But I don't know if you're ready to have that conversation. I am. Let me know what you think. Goodbye.